That's like listening to the dude talking, the four foot eleven dude talking about he's gonna be in the NBA. <laughs> so you could clap him. So but yeah, thank you. And so but then for some reason they want you to do it on the mic. Go on. Um, one of my favorite parts of your books is that you always include history and sort of like these backstories that you have put notes sometimes where you explain the Dominican history and that's one of my favorite parts. So I was just wondering what's um what's your reasoning for doing that? Like um, for the short stories in this book, you know, you you talk about how um, when Junior gets there, what what he loves about Santo Domingo, and when I visited last year, I saw some of those things, and I and I um, experienced some of the things that he says in the book, and I saw the differences between the resorts and you know just regular parts of the city. So then I was just wondering what what's what's your reason for including that. Thank you. I mean, I think as a character, part of what I really enjoy about Junior as a character, but what makes him difficult to write, is he himself is actually incredibly silent. He doesn't make much comments about what he suffers. In other words, Junior is not of this age, because we live in an age of overwhelming confession, right? People are always trying to strip themselves down to the bone and be like, I didn't grow up at a time where people ever claimed to be poor or ghetto. Like, I go to my students in college now, and all my students are trying to cop, I'm the poorest motherfucker in the world. <laughs> like, I don't know about that shit. Because I grew up on welfare, and I grew up with, back then, there were fucking food stamps, and ain't none of us were out there. The thing about poverty is that poverty tends to fucking rip people's tongues out, you know? It tends to be real traumatic. I, I, none of us were sitting around using this as a kind of a, as a, a currency, you know? We were like wrestling with this trauma. What's fascinating about Junior is that he never talks about what really it means to have suffered some of the things that he suffers. But he's very, very agile at describing the rest of the world. And he's very historically minded and politically minded. I mean, this is a dude who, and I've enjoyed his character, this, this is a dude who has very stark, harsh political beliefs, and I would rank my historical knowledge on a 1 through 10 at like a 2. Well, no, I mean, give it a break. I'm allowed to rank myself. I'll rank him at a 2. Junior is like a 9. And how can you rank someone smarter than you? The same way as always, you look shit up. <laughs> you know? And finally, and I think what's really useful about him is, and I've always liked people like this, Junior is not interested in anyone thinking he's smart. Do you know how you meet people who are, they have to prove to you that they're smart? They gotta be the smartest person in the room. They're like the todologo. I came up, no, I came up with a family of todologos. And so, Junior is a dude. When I decided to write him, I always thought Junior was the dude that everybody thinks is stupid for the first 20 minutes because they're like always oh, cursing, he's this and that. And it suddenly dawns on you that this motherfucker's smarter than you. And that's, that was when I first wrote Junior, it was when I was sitting there at Rutgers University at a Lambda party, and it suddenly dawned on me, yes, it suddenly dawned on me, this kid in front of me was one of the smartest people. And he was just like, wasn't trying to prove it. And I was like, man, that must be very peaceful. No matter what's wrong with you. Because I, I didn't have that beatitude. And so that's, I think, how he comes together and how the way he comes together deals with some of your questions. I think Junior would rather talk about Dominican political history than say, mm, I was molested. <laughs>